Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to install trailer hitch wiring on a first generation Mazda CX-9. This particular model is a 2015 and a similar procedure may apply to other models as well, which share the same platform, such as Ford or Lincoln. Rigid Hitch has supplied me with the trailer light kit for the installation. Be sure to check them out. I have left a link in the video description. They have various choices for this vehicle as well as a wide variety for a large range of other vehicles as well. As you can see, the kit comes with everything required for the installation. This includes the module, trailer wiring, wiring for your signal lights, inline fuse, power wire, connectors, cable ties, silicone sealant, and instructions. Simply lift up the hatch for the storage compartment. Remove any items inside. Then remove the one side hatch. It simply clips into place. Now lift out the center portion. Remove the side portion on the driver's side. Put your hands underneath the trim panel along the back and then pull up. This will have two clips on each side, so four in total. Using a standard screwdriver, flip up the caps for the bottom tie-down areas. Pull out the hooks on the top storage tie-down retainers. Behind both of these areas will be 10mm bolts that need to be removed. Use a 3H drive ratchet for this. Finally, unclip the panel. Do the same for the opposite side. We need to have access to the taillight wiring in behind these panels. Pop up those covers, pull up the hooks, and remove the 10mm bolts in behind. Then pull out that panel. It's hard to see here, but there is a wiring harness in behind the trunk hatch lift motor. It's a white connector. Depress the tang on the one connector and then pull it apart. Use a supplied wiring diagram with the trailer light kit. You'll see which wire colors are connected to each side of the vehicle. I plugged in both the male and female connectors into the existing vehicle harness. Then clip the one connector in the retaining hole so it stays out of the way of any moving components. There will be a ground wire which needs to be connected. This can be done by drilling a hole in the sheet metal or using an existing hole. I prefer using an existing hole. For this I'll be using the 10mm bolt for the hatch lift motor. The bolt is removed, then it's inserted into the eye and tightened back on. On the opposite side I'm doing the same procedure with the light connector. Disconnect the existing connector and then plug in the trailer light wiring. Clip in the one connector to the retaining hole. The module will be mounted on a flat surface in behind the trim panel using double faced adhesive which was supplied with the kit. Using rubbing alcohol or window cleaner, remove any contamination on the surfaces for both the steel and in behind that module box. Stick on the adhesive pad onto the module. Now stick the module onto the flat surface, firmly pressing it down. Cleaning up some of the wiring, use the supplied cable ties. Tie the wiring back so it stays out of the way of any components and doesn't get caught when installing the trim pieces. The black power wire coming from the module box needs to be hooked up. This can be connected directly to your battery, however I will be picking a simpler method. Twist the exposed conductor's wire strands, then using a butt connector, crimp it onto the black wire's exposed conductor. Using the supplied black wire, strip some of the insulation off, twist the conductor, and then install it into the butt connector. Finally, crimp the connector. Give it a pull test to ensure the wire is firmly in place. Using cable ties, tie the wires back so everything is neat and tidy. We can use side cutters after to trim off the excess cable tie. The protector for the trailer light wiring plug is also installed. 
pull it over the plug and then push the cap into place. Continue to tie back the wiring using cable ties. The green and black wires will need to extend over to the passenger side. The trailer connector will stop about midway above the jack. As mentioned earlier, this wiring kit came from Rigid Hitch. Be sure to check them out using the link in the video description. The trunk area has a constant 12 volt power source which feeds the 12 volt power outlet. I'll tap into this source instead of running the wire directly to the battery. The fuse has been removed for the circuit and then the wire to the back of the plug is cut and stripped. The red and yellow wire is used for power. The wire strands are twisted together. The one side will have the inline fuse connected. I then used a bare buck connector to crimp onto the connection. Heat shrink is applied to this connection. This will strengthen up the connection and provide a good seal as well. After that, the opposite side is inserted and crimped into the connection. A heat gun is used on the shrink tube. Here is the connection once it's done. Cut the black wire to size and strip the insulation back. Insert the buck connector and crimp it into place. Now crimp the buck connector again, this time on the inline fuse wire. Plug the wire back in and then install the supplied fuse. Also install the factory fuse for the circuit as well. Finish up with the cable ties and then clip the trim panel back into place. Going back to the driver's side, I clip the trim panel back into place. Ensure the rubber gasket is on the outside portion of the panel. You may need to use your fingers or a dull screwdriver to pull it over the plastic. Now install those clips and tie downs with the 10mm bolts. Use the ratchet with the 10mm socket, tighten those bolts. Going back to the passenger side, again pull that rubber gasket out. Now install the clips with the 10mm bolts using the 3 h drive ratchet. Before everything is finalized, the wiring can be checked using a multimeter, set it to the DC voltage setting. The 4-way flashers are enabled along with the parking lights. As you can see, all the terminals are functioning correctly. The trim panel at the bottom can then be clipped back into place. Again, that rubber gasket will need to be pulled back out. Install the storage tray on the driver's side first. Now install the large storage section with the trunk panel. Finally install the covers on each side. The wiring is now hidden by the jack compartment. This will keep the wiring out of the weather and away from any potential hazards. When it's needed, the jack panel can be opened up, the wiring can then be brought out, and the tailgate is closed. Be careful around the latch area so the wire doesn't get tangled up in this. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me, and leave a comment below if you found the story helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.